Hello all, welcome to Chutkara. My name is Sudhat Bedi and today I'm going to be talking about alcoholic beverages. So today we'll be discussing about the history of alcoholic beverages, the definitions, the various types of alcoholic beverages, the methods by which alcoholic beverages are made, pot still and patent still method, uh, proof which happens to be the terminology used for the method by which the alcohol content of the liquor is judged by and also in the end we're going to talk about various terms and definitions related to few alcoholic beverages as, as to how they are made and what ingredients are used in them. The word alcohol was derived from an Arabic word called alcohol and the word beverage is derived from the Latin word called bever which means rest from work. Usually these beverages are consumed to give you relax a person and they also have various other properties also. Alcoholic beverages are usually intoxicating in nature. So when we now talk about the history of alcoholic beverages, wine and beer are said to be the al oldest alcoholic beverages known to mankind. Earlier wines were made with honey and they were also known as meat. Wine is said to be more than 3000 years old and is also mentioned in the Bible which is the holy book for Christians and has also been mentioned in the Roman and Greek literatures of olden times. It was the Greeks who started to age the wine, mature it and store them in large vessels known as amphorae. So if we talk about the basic definition. Any portable liquid containing 0.5% to 75% ethyl alcohol by volume is termed as an alcoholic beverage. Alcohol has a formula of C2H5OH. It is an odorless liquid obtained through the fermentation of a sugar containing liquid. So that depends which yeast is used in that particular fermentation. As I had mentioned earlier, Alcoholic beverages affect the central nervous system. They tranquilize it and they also help in reducing tensions and worries related to day-to-day -day life. Effects of the alcohol remain in the body or we could say in the bloodstream for almost 24 hours. So now I'm going to talk about the various types of alcoholic beverages. They are classified into three basic parts. The first is fermented, which has wines, which are further classified into table wines, sparkling wines, aromatized wines and fortified wines. Then we have cedar which is made by the fermentation of apples. Fermented juice of apples are used for making cedar and they are popular in the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. And then we have peri which is made from the fermented juice of pears. These are also famous in France, South Wales and in England. Then we have the second category which is known as brewed and fermented in which we first brew the beverage and then we ferment it also. In which for the first and the most famous is your beer which we are all aware of and in second we have the sake which is the rice beer from Japan. And the last category that we have is of distilled beverages which are made by pot still or patent still method. The first one is spirits which are also known as liquors and or hard drinks which have whiskey made from grains, rum made from molasses, then we have gin which is made from juniper berries, then we have vodka which is made from potatoes, tequila made from blue agave cactus plant and brandy which is made by the distillation of wine. Now on the second in this category comes up liqueurs which are actually based on these above mentioned spirits which I just mentioned the hard drinks the liquors which act as a base spirit they have various flavoring agents they can have sweetening agents also like honey and sugar and the coloring agent is optional a few brands are like Corasso, Tia Maria, Kalua and in the end we have Eau de Vie which are actually fruit brandies which are famous in Spain and other parts of France which are made by the distillation of various fruits. For the production of these beverages we use the process of distillation 
which happens to be the process of separating the mixture components on the basis of their boiling point. The first basic apparatus used in this regard is the pot still, which happens to be a very old method of production. In the pot still, we first collect the grains, then we will make a wash out of them, we mix them with water as to get the desired moisture. And from there on, it passes on from one apparatus in the boiler, it goes on to the next part of the still where it gets cooled off, where it is made into three basic parts, head, heart and tail. The head is the one which is also called as four shots, but we do not use that much because it's not that pure. The purest part that we have is this, the heart. And we here need a temperature of 78.2 degrees Celsius in order to achieve the desired spirits that we're looking at. The tail is not used. It can be redistilled also, but the head is the part that we have, is the best suited for making those particular spirits. And that is used by the pot still method. There are other substances also which are made in this particular method, but they are not usable. Then this method produces a very fine substance known as congeners, which are actually substances which impart the aroma, the flavor and the overall color and maturity to the spirit. So this method produces very stronger spirits. So the second that still that we have in this regard is the patent still or the continuous still. It is also known as coffee still or Aeneas still after Aeneas coffee. This still uses the method in which there are two basic columns one is the analyzer and the rectifier both are 50 meter in, in height it is a continuous process we do not need to clear the or clean the still after every wash we just need to keep on adding the ingredients in batches so unlike the pot still method which we discussed earlier this method goes on and happens to be less expensive in this the wash the mixture of grains and water that passes on from one still from the analyzer where it gets boiled and it increases in vapor water vapor and this goes on to the rectifier where it gets condensed by the incoming vapor steam which is cold and then we draw it off in a container on the side in order to make sure that we have our desired spirit whatever impurities are there if you see in the picture downstairs the that are drawn off from the tail the rectifier is that particular part of the apparatus where we have perforated place the cold water comes in the spirit comes in contact which comes from the analyzer the wash it becomes water vapor due to the steam being given in and then it reaches the rectifier it is cleared the head is removed as it goes off in vapors and we draw off the desired spirit this method produces lighter spirits but this is a very cost effective method then we talk about the method by which we calculate the alcoholic strength which is known as proof this method was adopted by the western countries earlier they used to use uh, the gunpowder or the clark's float method to calculate the alcoholic content but nowadays we have three basic systems the american system which divides the alcohol content present in terms of the percentage into half then we have the british system which is famous in the united kingdom also known as the psych system in which 100 percent proof is taken as 57.1 percent alcohol by volume and in the end we have the gale assay method or the metric system which is famous in europe in which again we whatever amount is calculated in this particular by alcohol by volume we divide it into half if it says 200 so we'll be taking it as 100 or we'll, if it's 100 we can be taking it as 140 then i'm going to talk about a few basic definitions the first one happens to be wine wine is made from the fermentation of grape juice white grapes and black grapes and red grapes so it depends what kind of a mixture we are looking at and then we have brandy which is made by the distillation of wine as we increase the alcoholic content in the brandy by distillation and then we have liqueurs which are made by the base spirits which is in which the liquors are used like rum, gin, vodka, tequila and in which we have the flavoring agents it can be nuts, it can be herbs, it can be plants, fruits and then we have the sweetening agents and the liqueurs are made 
whiskey is made with grains and is made worldwide and is very famous in Scotland which is also known as scotch whiskey and bourbon whiskey in the USA then tequila which is the native drink of Mexico in South America which is made by the cactus plant known as blue agave so it happens to be a drink which gives you an instant buzz then we in the end we have gin which is made by the distillation of juniper berries and we have rum which is made by the distillation of sugarcane sugarcane has a substance known as molasses which is used to make rum thank you so much for taking out time and watching my video i hope you liked it well, whatever questions you have you can post them in the chat box and you can also i'll be talking about apartheid in my next video thank you so much please don't uh, forget to like subscribe and share my video thank you so much